Inspiring, uplifting, encouraging. This is the Acts 29 Life. Welcome back once again to the Acts 29 Life. Uh, uh, we're still on part three of I Will Build My Church. And uh, this is the second part of that same uh, Bible study. Last week we studied uh, about how that uh, Peter was given the keys to the kingdom uh, in, in Matthew 16, 18 through 19. We also read about Acts chapter 2, how it was a fulfillment of the day of Pentecost for the, for the spirit to fall by wind and fire. We spoke of that. And then when we read, uh, starting out with this Bible study with Acts chapter 2, verse 1, it says, When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were with one accord, one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. So if when we start our Acts 29 life, we start it with the filling, infilling of the baptism of the Holy Ghost, which is evidenced by speaking with other tongues. So in the process of this, we realize that in John 7:38, 7, 7, 37 through 39, it says, In the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. The scripture that says that you should receive is an imperative command. It's not like that's, it's really optional. It's that once you believe, you should receive it. It's something that you should desire and want. The, the word belly there means is the same word used for womb. So the Holy Ghost is associated with birth. Wind and fire accompanied God's presence in the Old Testament. Elijah at Mount Horeb in 1 Kings 19. But in the fulfillment of the baptism of the Holy Ghost, in this particular wind and fire, the, the sign that Pentecost was being fulfilled. The Greek and Hebrew, the term spirit and wind, are the same word. And so it's in spiritu, and it, it, it simply means that it is the breath of God. I'm thankful that we have the breath of God living and abiding on the end, inside of us. John 3 and 8, we, The wind bloweth where it listeth, but, and there heareth the sound thereof. But canst not tell whence it cometh or where it goeth, so is every one that is born of the Spirit. And when he had said this in John chapter 20, verse 22. Now this is not one of the recognized scriptures of the Great Commission, but in Matthew 28, Luke 24, Mark 16. This also fits in with those Great Commissions when it says, And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. It was a future tense, something that they should receive. I'm thankful today that God has placed in his scriptures things that we should study out. The Bible tells us that to study to show yourself approved, a workman that's not ashamed. In Ezekiel chapter 37, Then he said unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord, um, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. So cloven tongues as a fire divided to individuals symbolize the lighting of the lamps of the golden candlestick. So breath, the wind, the, the spirit, and the, also the cloven tongues as a fire, both of these happened on the day of Pentecost. These were unique and symbolic. In the Old Testament, we, we live uh, or we read and understand that it's types and shadows. It is things that are, are in the... Uh, uniqueness of God's word it, it's a it's a shadow of things to come it's like the shadow I, that you see on my hand here so it's it's an it's something that was going to happen it just happened uh, via prof, prophetic and so in Revelations chapter 1 verses 12 through 16 it says and I saw and I turned to see the voice that spoke with me and being turned I saw seven golden candlesticks in the midst of seven golden candlesticks one like unto the son of man clothed with a garment down to the foot and girt about the paps with a golden girdle his head and his hairs white like wool as white as snow and his eyes were as a flame of fire his feet like unto brass 
and if they burned in a furnace, his voice as the sound of many waters, and he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun uh, shineth in his strength. So we realize that the cloven tongues divided to individuals is symbolizing the light of the lamps of the golden candlestick. The lighting of the lamps, the candlesticks, represent the churches and the, the men of God or the angels of the church. And I thank God for that because it's the Holy Ghost that lights your church. It's the Holy Ghost that lights your ways. It's the Holy Ghost that's divided to us and given to us as the power of God as unto salvation. Matthew chapter 3, uh, verse 11 uh, says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he shall thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, and he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. So not only is the fire there divided to us, but it also is to de- it is also to devour the chaff. It's also to de- to purge out all the things that are in us that are bad. You know, <clears throat> um, I, I'm, 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 it's unique in the way God works. But when you first get the Holy Ghost, you speak with tongues, you get on fire for God. That's a terminology we use. We get on fire for God. But the real deal is that He's burning some things out of our spirit, out of our heart, our character flaws. There are things that I used to do that I don't do anymore. When you get the Holy Ghost, it'll be the same way. There will be things that you do uh, that, or that you used to do that you don't do anymore. Why? Because He is burning those things out, those bad things out. Chapter 5 of Matthew says, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So not only does that fire purge out those bad things, but it sets you on a hill to be noticed. Uh, if you ever have said in your heart, I really don't like to be um, you know, the spotlight on me. Well, it's too late. When you get the Holy Ghost, the spotlight's on you. You are now a target of the enemy of your soul. And that Holy Ghost, if you're going to live Acts 29 and you're going to live the lifestyle, you're going to live it as separate unto God. Holiness and, and God's Spirit work together whenever they... It, it, it's unique because it says that, that you're a city set on a hill. You are a light that shineth. When you're a light that's shining, how do people know you're different except they see what you are on the inside and the out? There was no electricity in the Bible times, so all the light that man could do, use to dispel darkness was created by fire. God simply uses that fire analogy to, to strike us uh, and, and light us up so that we can be seen. The Bible even says that we are an epistle, which is a book of the Bible. We are an epistle known and read of all men. How would they know and, 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 uh, and read us except that we be a light that they can see? Acts chapter 1, we see Jesus leaving his disciples and going on into heaven. Acts 2, we see Jesus returning to his disciples through the Holy Ghost. The Gospels is Christ with them. Acts is Christ in them. Colossians 1.27 says, To whom God made known what is the riches of the glory of the mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Acts 2 and 4, to fulfill this particular Bible study, it says, And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Looking forward to another week of I Will Build My Church. Thank you for 